How's it going? Craig Udelman here again. Uh, some more technique tips for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about just how you hold the bow real quick. Uh, just like the fiddle, there's so many different ways to do it and none of them are right. Uh, and actually, if you watch videos of some of the old time fiddlers, you'll see a lot of things that look quite wrong if there was such a thing as wrong. Uh, but they make it work. And um, so I'm not going to tell you there's a right way to do it, but I will just talk about some possibilities and what makes them work. Um, just like with the left hand, for me, one of the basic principles uh, of a bull hold is I want something that'll let my wrist move. Um, you know, my wrist does still move. I'm not that old yet, so I want to try and use that. That's uh, you know how we get a lot of the, the string crossings and just the quick notes and and the connections between bows. Um, so what will enable that is your thumb being bent and your pinky at least not being locked in straight. Uh, if you want, you can again try to wiggle your hand up and down like this with a bent thumb and pinky, and now lock those things sort of straighter out and do the same thing when you notice a lot more resistance in there. So, okay, let's start with how I generally hold the bow, um, which is my fingers actually a little bit deeper on the stick. Often people grip it in their fingertips, uh, which if you do that, again, it can work just fine, uh, but it means that all of these joints in your fingers are engaged and tense, uh, and you're tense here. So there's a lot of tension and like a stiff thing holding the bow. Um, which can make you do get a lot of that kind of bouncy stuff. It's like riding a car with no shocks. Uh, so I find that by putting the fingers a little bit deeper over the bow, then these joints can all stay loose and absorb some of those bounces and whatnot and get a clearer tone, less bouncing on the string. Um, and also what hopefully that allows for is for the weight of the arm to really just rest on the stick. And that way you're not pushing down, which again will be sort of flexing and tensing all those springs, but just letting the weight of the arm naturally pull. So I usually end up with my knuckles somewhere like right here in the middle of my fingers or maybe kind of there, uh, contacting the bow. And, um, and I really like the way that feels. I will also, play in a bunch of other positions which I'll show you but if you're looking for a place to start I think that is a great one um, the pinky you don't really need it for most old-time bowing uh, but so if it's more comfortable to just leave it off the stick you know back here or there or sort of like resting like that to me that's fine um, the one thing is to avoid is it being really flat like this because that will lock your wrist in um, so if anything, it should be curled on the stick and slightly pushing out a little bit. So it's kind of wedged on the inner facing top part of the bow. Um, and the most difficult part is the thumb. Uh, a lot of people play like this uh, with the thumb bent that way. Uh, and again, a lot of people make it work, but I think it will work better if you can have it bent facing out. Uh, so basically my position is more or less something like this with the thumb bent under the fingers. And I generally try to stay relatively flat across here. Um, and that gives me also room to work with here so that I can have a few different angles and positions as I'm playing. Um, the part of the thumb that really contacts the bow for me is like this little corner here of the, the right hand corner of the nail. And I generally stick that up against the rubber or maybe up here or somewhere in the middle if I'm depending where I'm playing. And, and that's kind of like the fulcrum of my grip is this relationship between the thumb there that's balancing, the finger you know, the middle finger or the pointer finger on top, and maybe the pinky that's helping to counterbalance that. Um, and I really look to have all those joints loose. Uh, so that, to me, is a great way to play and to get a really full tone and to allow for all sorts of flexibility. Uh, but you don't necessarily need that all. You can also just use two fingers.
or maybe three fingers and still get a lot of nice stuff. So that, that works just fine. It's a little bit less full of a sound, but it has a nice skip to it. You know, if I do the same thing with all my fingers down. It's a bigger tone even when I'm not, you know, trying to get a full classical tone. Uh, but so if you do that, I, I still try to keep the same principle of not gripping in the fingertips, letting the fingers rest on the bow. And then just let these other fingers kind of stay up there. Um, there is something nice about sort of making it a very small thing that's holding the bow. You get a lot of bounce and wiggle. So if you're playing fast stuff with a lot of separate bows, that can be really great. I tend to use that kind of bowing more if I'm doing circle bowing and these sorts of things. And if I'm doing more Nashville shuffle or whatever kind of clean playing, then I will put the whole hand on the bow. Um, and the last thing is where do you hold it? Uh, do you hold it right at the frog, a little bit up, or maybe choke up a lot? Uh, and it's just a personal preference thing. Uh, it does change the balance of the bow, right? If you hold it sort of nearer the balance point, that means you have a more or less equal weight on both sides uh, and so a lot of people find that helpful for doing doing quick bows um, and it's just a little bit less work to play so if you're gonna play for four hours you know playing fast tunes or whatever in a session that can make it a little bit easier on you um, you do lose a little bit of the tone uh, so again if I'm playing a waltz or something really sweet and I want to have the biggest sweetest tone I can then I will definitely hold it right here at the frog. But quite often my position is somewhere just a little bit choked up. So I kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, but there's no right answer. It's, it's whatever works for you. Um, you do sometimes have to be careful. Like if you're playing it down here, I, I will often choke up a little bit because otherwise it's just how the way it changes the mechanics. But if you choke up too much and you're not used to it, you might end up doing a bit of... I don't know if you can see, but I'm really running into my, my legs here. So it's like, just watch out for that. Uh, but experiment with different, different ways of holding the bow. Um, once you're actually playing, uh, you don't want the bow to tilt this way almost ever. That tends to give you more chance of getting harmonics and, uh, and bad squeechy sound is, sounds. Uh, of course, some people do that and it works, but I would say lean just a little bit to the outside. Um, ideally not too much because you want to use the springiness you get from the bow on the string to, to get some bounce and some stuff to work with for all the intricate bowings you're doing. Uh, but you can also play with that um, and, and try different things. And uh, if you really want a good sound, uh, I can't recommend highly enough just playing some open strings for a couple minutes. You know, it's a great way to warm up and just really listen to the tone. And I try to do that and feel in my body, see if there's tension in different places and relax it, you know, going all the way from my hips through my, my shoulders and back all the way out to the arms, you know, and just, just slow bows and gradually getting faster. Doing that to get loose a bit and listen to the sound, I find really helpful experimenting with different placements of the bow, different pressures, different placement of your hand. Uh, so if you don't ever think about that stuff, you know, try thinking about it a little bit and uh, it might help you find that sound you're going for and uh, hopefully a bit more comfort so that you can really play for hours and hours. 
get all the tunes and notes you want. Hope that's helpful. See you next time.